Hello everyone, welcome to the Metal Galaxy where we bring reviews, interviews and the Metal Galaxy news into your living room. Tonight we are traveling to the Netherlands to have a folkist night with folk pagan giant Heidefall. Welcome Kuhn. Kuhn, yes. <laughs> Kuhn. Good evening, hi, how are you? Good. So for those who are not familiar with Heidefall, can you please introduce your band and yourself? Yes, of course. Um, uh, my name is Koen Vuurdichter. I'm uh, the guitar player for uh, Heidevolk. And Heidevolk is a folk slash pagan metal band um, singing in Dutch. Uh, and it started about 20 years ago or something. We've released seven albums so far. And um, yeah, that's what we do. We, we try to bring a, a, a good combination between folk music and metal and in Dutch mostly. Nice, so almost two decades of um, Heidefolk, so can you tell us more about your role in Heidefolk and from what I've seen as well, uh, the, you've joined Heidefolk a little bit later, correct? That's correct, yeah, yeah. I'm, um, nowadays I'm the guitar player, but um, uh, I started uh, playing with Heidefolk in 2015, yes, eight years ago. Um, and I joined the band as a session guitar player, actually. So they uh, basically hired me to do a couple of tours. And uh, my first show was actually on a grass pop metal festival. Nice. Uh, in front of 20,000 people. That was my first uh, show with Heidefolk. And uh, I, yeah, it goes without saying that, that I instantly liked it and uh, kept on doing it with the band. And in September that year, 2015, I did a, a Northern America tour, a North America tour with them, uh, like 25 shows in a row. And after that, I was basically a full-time member of the band and recorded two albums with them so far, Free Van Verzet, and now the new one, Wedekeer. Amazing, and grass pop is the way to go. Like for those who are not familiar with the Dutch Belgium scene, like everyone goes there in Netherlands. I'm mm -hmm. really bad. I haven't been there, but I know it, and uh, definitely something. Yeah, it's one of the, in my opinion, uh, one of the greatest festivals that we have in this region. It's it's obviously one of the biggest metal festivals in this uh, in this region, but it's also. Uh, all the big bands play there and it's just kind of like a prestige thing for a Dutch band or Belgian band to uh, to be able to play there. And uh, we're actually going to play there again this year in June. So uh, that's two times. So I'm really excited about that. Great. So we have the introduction now. When you listen to Vedic here, there are a lot of differences if you compare yourself to Scandinavia counterparts like Wardruna. What do you think makes Heidefolk so unique? Any similarities that we can find in bot scenes? Um, what makes us unique is, first of all, I think, is the dual vocals. Um, most bands have one, one lead singer. Um, but Heidefolk has always, ever since the first album, uh, has worked with two male vocalists. And the thing is that basically these two vocalists are acting as one vocalist. And that's the secret of our sound, basically. So almost every time you hear a song of Heidefolk, you hear two vocals, a low one and a higher one, singing together. And this is something that... Uh, uh, makes us a little bit different compared to other folk metal bands, I guess. And um, it comes from an idea 
where Heidefolk is uh, always aiming to uh, uh, act as storytellers and not particularly just as a band. So what we try to do is create stories and working with two vocalists uh, actually enhances, enhances that uh, possibility to bring those stories to the people. And um, obviously there are also a lot of similarities with, with bands like, um, well, you mentioned Wardruna, but that's not, of course, very unique band, if you can yeah. call them a band. It's an act more like an experience, in my opinion, not really a band. And I really love them. It's one of my favorite uh, uh, acts or art, basically. I see it as art, almost. Um, but I, I think we definitely, on this new album, we have the, the, the title track, Vedakir. It's kind of similar, like Vardruna, maybe in a way. It has that primal feeling a little bit. Nice. And for me, in my opinion, when I listened to Varjuna, uh, we had as well folk metal bands like Arab Altar, uh, Scandinavia. And I always find them a bit more darker. Whereas for me, uh, your band, Heide Folk, is much more uplifting. I think it might be the Dutch uh, singing that adds like a different uh, flavor or sound to it as well. But definitely, yeah, yeah. And um, I agree with you that a, a lot of Heidefolk songs have that more uplifting feeling or sort of like a positive atmosphere going on. And this is something that we are aware of. Uh, there are songs that are spe specifically about drinking and partying and, or going to Valhalla or whatever. And I think a lot of these stories, it depends on the stories that we're trying to tell. And some stories just need a more positive message. I guess, and we also use that when we write the actual music of the song. Uh, we use different chords, so it's major, a major scale instead of a minor scale, and this is obviously a big difference. A lot of most metal is minor uh, in a minor scale, and we use major scales as well. We're not afraid to use them. Nice, and then the difference. Even when you sing about drinking, it has some serious because if you listen sometimes to bands like Brothers of Metal, they go crazy with the concept, but I think your band expresses then the story, the myths of brotherhood. I think that's the story you tell them. Definitely, yeah. It's not just purely let's drink. I mean, obviously, we, li we like a beer every now and then. This is, I mean, we have two drinking horns in our logo. I mean, obviously, we like drinking, but it's... It's more, like you said, it's more coming from a storytelling background where we are trying to get across the stories about the old days where people would sit on a huge table with large feasts and drinking meat and drinking whatever from, you know, like they did in the old days after they returned from a battle or from the battleground. And this is, uh, this is the atmosphere that we're trying to create, basically. Yeah. So yeah, you're returning not from the battlefield, but from the gig, from storytelling, right? So, so, so. it's also a battlefield, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, the more spit, more spit. Yes. Uh, so speaking about scenes, the Dutch scene is quite famous for its Dutch symphonic metal band and Heidefolk. Thus, I'm wondering how the journey of Dutch folk pa pagan metal started. How this journey started? Well, yeah. Um, if we're going back to the beginning, um, like s let's say 20 years ago when this all started, uh, Heidefolk um, came from the idea to combine a metal band, like a regular metal band, with a Viking choir. So you had a group of people in Arnhem, and basically, one of the, uh, one part of the group was the metal band, and the other part was a couple of guys who wanted to sing as a Viking choir. And one night they combined those ideas and said, well, let's make a band out of these two ideas and just make a metal band and a Viking choir mm -hmm. in one. And at this same time, uh, you, this whole folk metal scene started to flourish all of a sudden. So you had... Um, all of a sudden, you had, you had a couple of big names coming from different countries, from Finland, from wherever, from Germany. All of a sudden, there was this folk metal vibe and scene that, that existed. 
And I guess Heidefolk uh, basically came at the right time with the first album and got picked up by Napalm Records pretty fast. And after that, um, from what the guys told me, like Rowan and, and Joost, the old drummer, uh, conversations I have with them, I mean, uh, the idea that I, I wasn't there, obviously, was in the metal scene for a long time already, but not in that scene. And um, things just exploded, basically, in the folk metal scene, all of a sudden. Yeah, and really uh, yeah, and just to keep the story correct, and then Joost and the founding members, they're not here anymore with Heidefolk, correct? That's correct, but you know, the thing is, there's, there's a... It's not as easy as most people think it is, being in a band that yeah. tours. I mean, I, I've been playing in metal bands for almost 30 years, three decades. Uh, since 1995, I started doing this. Um, I'm 43 years old now. And from what I've known, a couple of bands, if you stay at a certain level, you can stay together for a very long time in the same lineup. But as soon as you start touring and money comes in, and there's a record label and there's a booker and there's a management and there's a lot of money going around and people have jobs people have families and then you see certain people say well i can't do this anymore because of time because of school because of work this is a too big a risk for me to have this lifestyle and this is what i see in all the bands that i ever played in it's not for everybody and this yeah. is what happened in heidefolk as well i mean half of all the members that left left because of these reasons because they couldn't tour anymore, because they had to studies or family or whatever. It's just uh, the good thing to know is that most members that left in he from Heidefolk uh, are still good friends of the band. And even last week when we played the, the release shows, um, a couple of old members were there to, par to party with us. Nice. So the DNA is somewhere there. Oh, alive. always, always. Yeah. Heidefolk is a collective of individuals. Uh, but the most important thing is, is that it's Heidefolk is more than just these individuals. It's like a, um, almost a like a, um, well, I don't know if it's a brand, but it's almost like a supernatural thing, feeling where everybody that comes in has, gets the vibe. And uh, we are very determined to keep that focus going going as long as we can without okay, you know like keeping it true to the to the to the height of folk it once was basically as much as possible obviously and it makes a great band like the new album baby care it's so great like uh, the uniqueness that you have told like duo uh vocals and the whole album is really i was enjoying all songs they really I felt immersed in this album and since the beginning, like I discovered like High the Folk a long time ago and it's a band. I was like in roots with it and yeah, great. Thank you for uh, Sarah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, so I've noticed, especially in the dots uh, scene, a lot of bands were going through lineup uh, changes and leaning towards a more modern commercial hand to the dot scene. However, when listening to Vedic here, we don't see this kind of influences. So I'm wondering how did uh, recent developments in the music scenes or in general influence your uh, new album Vedic here? It does not influence us whatsoever. Because like I said earlier, uh, what, what we do with Heidefolk is we create a story and when we have these stories, we write the music to accompany those stories. So let me tell you, um, to explain it, um, mm -hmm. when we write a new album, and I, I've been uh, involved in two albums, so I don't know how it was in the old days, but I do know that it was this exactly the same from what they told me. Um, there's always uh, a story first. So somebody in the band comes up with a general idea and says, well, this is going to be the topic the 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 main theme of the album and then they start writing lyrics uh ideas and then each idea gets music combined with it and that's what we did this time as well we uh we talked about a certain subject we talked about 
what, what are we going to write about? And then we came up with the runes, um, uh, which is a very wide subject, obviously. But um, we came up with the idea to pick out a not certain amount of runes and uh, combine them or attach them to uh, topics like personal growth and development and uh, um, what's the word for it? Um, you can try in uh, dots and then I can see if I can translate it. Uh, Personal ontwikkeling. So it's like it's a personal... Personal development. Yeah, personal development and just uh, as individuals. And this is something that we... So we picked out 12 runes for this album and each rune we combined with a uh, with old stories about runes and made them ours, so to speak. So, for example, um, the let me well, what's a good example? Uh, Uros, the, the song mm -hmm. Uros, uh, is based on the rune Uros, and this is a rune that's about which you can translate as a. Uh, um, uh coming of age story so growing from a young ma young boy to a to a man and it also uh reflects uh or is about the ancestors of our modern day cows actually <laughs> so it's this very fierce animal that used to live in this region it's like a big ox basically that's the ur os the the, the ancient cow so to speak ur os and this is what also uh, directs to the Urus. So every single song on this album has like a double meaning like that, basically. And we wrote those stories, and from there on, we attach the music to them. So if you ask me uh, what influenced you for this album musically, it's not music that influences us. It's more stories in life in general that influences us and nature and things that go on in the world. This this influences mu us much more than just listening to music or whatever. We're more, it's more like an old school. Maybe that's also why we sound why the way we sound. Because uh, yeah. we try to get those influences somewhere else, basically. Thank you so much for explaining this in details. And uh, that's what makes, I think, Hi, folks, so great because you really write from yourself, but as well from the stories around you. And it's something unique as we spoke tonight. It's something you are not seeing elsewhere. So great. Uh, so so uh, speaking about developments, the album is about revival, revival and to look inside, find out who you are, what's driving us, what our values are and what we have learned from life up until now, according to the promo, correct? It's one way to uh, interpret it, the album uh, title. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, and it reflects the main themes that circle within these lyrics from these songs. Mm -hmm. So def it, it is true in a way, but there's more to it. Uh, Vedekir is not just a return to us. It's, it's more than just a return, it's also about um, believing in something more than life itself, basically, for me personally. So not the Vedakir when you die, uh, basically, or it's not a Vedakir in a way of a return, but it's more like um, believing that there is more after this. So not per se a return to this life, but maybe a uh, promotion to something higher than this, like for example, a warrior going to Valhalla, which nice. is not a re not a return by itself. It is a return to a different form, but not a return, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah, I uh, completely understand, and it's a great uh, look into the album and definitely to something think about i will think about it when i'm writing a therapy <laughs> this is this is also um, sorry for interrupting you no one of our singles uh, drink met the gode which is drinking mm -hmm. drink with the gods is also about that it's i mean it's a song about drinking but it's about the warrior 
going to Walhalla after he's he died in a battle defending his family, basically. And um, he gets rewarded by going to Walhalla, where his father is there. And he, he sees his father, and he's re reunited with all his friends. And um, yeah, so you see this in every song on this album, basically. Great. And that basically, this uh, team basically binds all uh, stories together. So they are more loosely or connected to this team, basically. Definitely. Yeah, it, it is a concept album. Yeah, definitely. Great. Let's do one random questions. And I think this would be a nice one for what we spoke today. If you could be reincarnated as some animal, who would you want to be? As an animal? Yes. Uh, definitely a raven. Raven. Uh, and it's my, why it's my, part... my favorite animal. <laughs> it, it would either be the wolf or a raven. So um, a wolf is also very tempting to say, but I would I still would go for a raven because a ra raven can fly, obviously. But a raven is so much more than just an animal to me. A raven is something that's um an animal that's somewhere in between this reality and the next basically it's like a, a guider of souls basically that's how i see it interesting i wouldn't have uh, said so but now i have a new perspective to the raven i like myself as well ravens because it's always something in storytelling in scandinavia i think uh, it yeah. plays a big role they're mysterious, and there's uh, so much more to them than we know. Right. So uh, let's go back to Vedakir. The whole album is in that. However, for those who order the physical versions, uh, they get two songs in English called Drinking with the Gods and The Hunter's Claw. If I'm correct, they are the English version of Drinking with the Goden and Claw of Foruit. Correct? That's correct. Yeah, they're basically the same songs. The music is the same, but we, uh, Jaco and uh, Daniel are uh, are singers. They uh, uh, did different versions in English for these songs. So uh, yeah, it's just as a bonus, so uh, the non-Dutch speaking fans yeah. can uh, easily understand what we're singing about, or a, a little bit easier. And I'm wondering why this particle two songs and how does the English language empower uh, these songs? Well, obviously, it's not every song is suitable to translate into English, I think. Yeah. Uh, because the Dutch language can be quite restricted. Or I don't know if restricted is the, uh, the, the correct word. It's more it's, that some, yeah, I know you, you have experience with this as well. Yeah, uh, I think, uh, sorry for interrupting. I think when I listen to Heidefog, there's also some old language used True. correct. So it makes it, I think, hard in English to use the correct phrase for story uh, telling. That's exactly it. Yeah. And obviously we are not English speaking persons, so uh, we can speak English, but our... Uh, our uh, knowledge of the English English language is is of course limited compared to Dutch, um, and, and and some songs just work better in English than other songs. So uh, why we chose these two songs? Mostly because of the the translation possibility, but also the, uh, because we think that Drink met de Gode and Klauwen yeah. Vooruit, the other song, are two uh, of the more well, it's a good, gives you a good view on what this album is musically, I think. It's a good combination. Drink with the Gods, Drink with the God is more like a traditional song, a little bit. And Klauwen Vooruit is more like a little bit more modern metal song for Heidevolk. I think. Totally, totally agree uh, with you. Good, great. So, last question for tonight. Some of us hadn't uh, haven't had uh, the pleasure to see live. How does a typical Heidefolk uh, show looks like? And anything new things we will see in the live uh, performance of Vedekir? Well, I think um, uh, the thing I like the most about playing in Heidefolk is the, sh the live shows because 
what we try to do on stage is something um, quite special because we have at least six people on stage, sometimes seven when we have to bring our live violin player as well. And uh, we basically go there to bring the people uh, as much as a show as, a, as possible. So we're very energetic on stage. There's a lot of extremely uh, um, amount of uh, extreme amount of uh, interaction with the crowd going on always and um, I think this is something that sets us apart we, 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 we try to make one big party out of it always every single night and um, what was your other question again and uh, for Vedekir anything else we will see on the live performance compared to the old show you mean or... yeah yeah exactly uh, well, obviously, some new mm -hmm. songs here and there, um, and maybe some guest musicians every now and then. I mean, last week we played with uh, 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 Jaco's wife, uh, Hanna. Uh, she she uh, joined us on stage with the nickel harpa, which is a nice. beautiful instrument, and she's very good at playing it. And uh, we also had a, a, another guy who also part participated on the album with the Fool, which is like a very old drum basically uh and there you you might see this more often but it's difficult because when we tour uh and when we play a show in spain or in france or wherever and we are already with six people and crew there's not yeah. enough space to bring everybody obviously so we need to it's not always possible to bring extra people but when we can we do and if we don't we 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 make sure to make it a hell of a show always nice. Amazing, looking forward now uh, to see Heide Folk and your new one as well. Sounds really great to see uh, live uh, Heide Kier. Uh, for tonight, that were my questions. Anything you would like to add to this interview or about the album, what we have not mentioned yet? Um, well, I, I just hope that people um, uh, give, give this album a chance. And, uh, to, just take a listen on, on whatever kind of streaming service there is, for example, Spotify or whatever. Just check it out and uh, uh, give it a listen, even if you're not into folk metal. I think uh, we we, uh, we uh, have some really interesting songs on this album, and uh, especially stories. So, uh, yeah, check it out, I would say, and uh, hopefully... Uh, We'll see uh, each other uh, on stage somewhere in Europe this upcoming summer. Yeah, certainly. I hope so too. And I would like to add as well, check Heide Folk. We will post below the links as Heide Folk has greatly like uh, stories to tell. Like on YouTube, they have a story about Drink Meadowhode, but as well, Klauen uh, Freudwitz bring the stories alive. and. I think it's a great element for non uh, English, uh, sorry, non Dutch uh, speakers to get an idea as well about the stories. It might be a bit easier to follow as well. So, great. Awesome. Thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Kuhn. No thank problem. You. Yeah, thank you, Kuhn, for tuning in tonight. We want to thank you, the viewer, as well for your support, sharing, and commenting on the interview. And also thanks for All Knower and Depo Records for the press material and sharing event and promoting this. Uh, so, yeah, for now, good night. And we see the links below to get your own uh, copy of Vader Care.